What's going on, people? Troops TV. Back again. Episode 55, right? Five or six, six. blood. Is it Shit. five or six? I think, Shit. I think it's six. Is it six? We've got Josh in the cut today. You understand? Big up, big Josh. You get me jet skis uh, chopping up the Kobe Jones uh, MLS Hall of Famer. Uh, came through on the podcast today. Shout out, Kobe. Um, we're going to be dropping that for you lot a bit later apologies to my lafc brothers because obviously we had to get the what the rust Jesus was that Christ. what was that did someone let one rip or something bro like i don't That's, know what scared the little shit out of me. jesus blood but um you lot already know back again with troops is being presented by heineken now heineken has that crisp a yeast you get me crisp taste fresh you understand they broke through the defense like my man did from his own half yesterday, blood. When he literally just ran it and left Sabios for dead. You understand? Brought through the defense. You get me? And you get me. It was just absolute shambles, bro. You understand? And yep. as you can see, we have our six pack. You get me? Because the six pack is needed. But you lot can also get your six pack from your uh, local retailer. Or you can get it. Delivered straight to your crib because obviously if you're an Arsenal fan, you're avoiding people. So mo mo most likely it's peak out there. Your clerk's in your yard, isn't it, blood? You get me? You're gonna want that delivered straight to the crib. Heineken can do that for you. You get me? But you have to remember, you must be 21 and please drink responsibly, drink responsibly bro. You get me? Zar, cheers, fam. You, you get doing, me? Man? It's um, it's 11:36 in the morning. It's five o'clock somewhere. That's what Arsenal does to you. You get me? Let's slide straight into it, bro. Villarreal 2, Arsenal 1. Now, if you even look back here yeah, on the pod, when we done predictions, mm -hmm. what did I say? You, you said 2-1. I would said, I think I would said 1-1. One, one. You said 1-1. One, yeah. One. I, I said, said one, my one. heart says 1-1, one, one, yeah. but my head yeah. says 2-1 Villarreal. Because I just know. Yeah. Do you understand? Let's start with the lineup, blood. You get me? It went wrong from the lineup. Mm -hmm. You understand? This... Is all down to Mikael Arteta. Yes. I'm not hearing nothing else. It's him. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Because the biggest game of his career mm -hmm. as a manager, the biggest game for Arsenal, yeah, this season, in years, excuse me, in probably two years. Yeah. Because this is a bigger game than the FA Cup final. Mm -hmm. You understand? FA Cup final, you, yeah, it's a final, you win a trophy, but this one here, you get me. It's not a final, but... There's more coming from it if you win this 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 tournament. You get me? You're you're getting a trophy and you're going back to the promised yeah, land. It gets you to the next level. The champions. Dun, 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 dun. Bro, when I'm seeing Heineken on the side of the champions of the Champions League games, blood, and I'm just seeing no Arsenal there, blood. Just, it just pisses me yeah. off, bro. Because, brother, like, we have the proper top of the top top of the top of the notch. Uh, not top and not top of the notch. Top notch beer. You get me? The 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 gaucho of beers, blood. Yeah, you understand? This ain't no no coal and them thing there. Fosters and them man there. This is Heineken. So we expect Heineken performances from the team, mm -hmm. but we're getting diluted black current, <sighs> bro. It's embarrassing. How can you go for a false nine in 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 your like? You've never done it. A complete change of system in the most important game. Of his life, this guy has balls of steel. He I thinks he's he thinks he's Pep. Isn't he, he, he he really does. He thinks he's Pep. <laughs> Donny watched the game again. Donny watched the Man City game and said, "You know what? We got no strikers here. Let's do let the full. Let line. me copy like, this. Do you understand? Yeah. And then, like, this is why I said, yeah, I want Xhaka in the midfield mm -hmm. and I want Saka at left back because mm -hmm. that. F oh my god, I don't even know. What to <coughs> I don't even know what to call him, blood. You understand? He's just an absolute fucking wild lad, bro. He's just as bad as Arteta, mm -hmm. blood. You understand? That's a bio shoot, blood. He has been playing against us this whole Europa League campaign. Every single game, a crucial mistake. He has made the most mistakes in this Europa League campaign, bro. He is the one constant in our campaign, blood, of, 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 of failure, mm -hmm. of abysmal performances, of stupidity. Do you understand? But I blame... My man again. Yeah. Bakar, you see what was happening. Take him off. He's all over the place. He's Take coming out off. and saying he had a word with him at half time. 
What word did you have with him? Got a red card 10 minutes after, 10, 15 minutes after. I'm done with him. Yeah. I'm done with Arteta, bro. No, I don't blame you. He's a clown. I really don't blame you. After that, that was so insulting. What he what the 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 the, tech, the setup he did for the most important game was so insulting. And look at the players. Yeah. Look at the where, where was the press? No intensity, no desire, no interest. This is a semi-final mm -hmm. of a European competition. And that's how you man are performing. Couldn't even motivate them to do anything. For, off the go, I mean, their tanks are full of energy and they could not even press at the very, very first goal of the minute. It's, it's sad. Is this the process? I'm done supporting it. I'm actually, I feel embarrassed that I actually have supported it in the beginning. I really do. It's just he's completely let me down. At... He's completely out of his depth. Yeah. He doesn't have a clue. And last night showed you. Mm -hmm. Unai Emery had a plan. Yeah. Unai Emery's team knew what they were doing and we could see what they were trying to implement. I don't know what they're trying to implement. I could see a philosophy from, from Villarreal. Do you understand? They play out from the back. Yep. You get me? Defense. Pass and move. You get me? Not static. Just there. You get me? It's embarrassing, yeah. bro. It's embarrassing, blood. Like, even us getting that penalty, blood. Was it a penalty? Soft one. When I'm seeing yeah. it again, blood, yeah. I'm seeing Saka <laughs> kick the youth, blood. Yeah, no. I, I mean, I'll take it because we got it, but... I love Saka, but I don't know what he's talking about yeah. when he come out and he's saying, we were better than them. We showed that we're better than them. We dominated when we had 10 men. Brother, what, what game was you watching, bro? What game? What game? What game? I think we had one shot in the first half and that was that fucking idiot party. And I don't even class that as a shot, blood. Yeah. That was it. That was it, blood. Because in the second one, he the second one, he then skied like a fucking madman, yeah. Like, even our the game management, you have to look at the game management again. Where is it? Non-existent. Man's making double changes, 85th minute. 85th, yeah. You understand? You down, you go down to 10 men, you don't make a change. You get me? Leno made a crucial save at 2-0. Yeah. Because that would have been free. There was also another one that came through came through the defender's legs. They said it was an easy save, but I mean coming through defender's legs was pretty it was a pretty good save too. If, but it's just You think we can do it next leg? Honestly, if I'm gonna be honest, there's nothing for me to 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 get any confidence from. I want to, my heart says yes, but my brain based off what I saw, Villarreal were very organized, they were compact. They could have scored more. Yeah. We couldn't, we couldn't get through the lines, get in between the lines with them. They pushed us out wide. And then each time we went wide, we played with a fucking false nine. So you can't cross it in anyway. So it's, you just kept going. The, our usual you go this way, back to the center backs, go that way type of shit. It's, so unless we figure out how to somehow break down that organized thing, which I don't think we will in the next couple couple weeks or so, because your manager, the, well, my manager, our manager is inept. I don't know, man. I, I, I have zero confidence, honestly. In, in this whole, uh, in this whole thing. But hey, I'll still support him. Thomas Partey. It's about time. Let's talk. It's about time. It's about time he's brought up. I put heat on him. People cried. Brought brought in to change our culture in central midfield. Correct me if I'm wrong. Are we not worse? If we're being honest, it looks like it. Has how he's had more bad performances than good. He's had a run of games, and I don't see what we paid forty five million pound for at this moment in time. Because brother, he just gets overrun in yeah. the midfield. His passing is shocking. Like he'll play like one or two good balls in the match, blood, and then he'll make like two, maybe one, make one, one or two recoveries, blood. But majority of the game, yeah. He's giving the ball away. He's getting bypassed. He's not bringing no stability to the midfield. The midfield was non-existent mm -hmm. yesterday. There was no midfield battle. They were having the time in their lives in there, the Villarreal players, blood. And his job is to be there, to be the midfield. So it's... Have we made... Because before he came to Arsenal, he was one of the top, top midfielders in the world, in, in world football. Injury-free too. Have, have we... Have our shit, has our shit rubbed off on him? And now he's shit because we have to be real blood. He's been shocking since he's come. Yeah. The only game he's been kind of good was Man United. Mm. 
every other game, it's like, you see glimpses, but I don't see no consistency. He's had a run of games, so his fitness should be up there now. You understand? He's been in there for a couple, he's been in there for over a month now, bro. Mm. So, you get me? What's going on with Partey? What do we do with Partey? I, because you can't even drop him, yeah. because who replaces him? Fucking on any. <laughs> who replaces him? <laughs> yeah, it's it's. I don't know. I guess I guess what 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 I have noticed throughout the season is he does play a little bit better with Granite Shaka. So I think the only thing I agree that with that. Can, the only thing that we can do is now. But it's fucking also wants to play Shaka at left back and play Sabios with him. Put put in the stiffest man on the field. Pause. In one of the most trickiest positions, yeah. a left back, blood. When you have a you have dynamic wingers coming at your club, blood. Yeah, yeah. You got the overlap. You Ch- understand? Ch- Quinze doing. How is he gonna? How is Jacko supposed to? Uh, because Jacko was bad for the goal, yeah. Because mm. you don't let them come in the box. Mm. Keep him out the box, blood. Yeah. Go interact with him, bro. Don't let him come. Mm-hmm. You go. You mm-hmm. understand? But he's not a natural left-sided player. He plays in the middle of the pitch, blood. How the fuck are you now going to put this man onto the left side of the defence, blood? Or what? Because he's got a left foot. You're full of shit, Arteta, bro. You have no sense in your head. You see, common sense is free. It's not like education where you have to pay for it and you have to pay to get educated. It's not free. I'm sorry. Um, Common sense is free. free, bro. Yeah? The common sense, the common denominator. Saka plays on the left-hand side. Yeah? Saka played fucking um, left back for us when he came into the mm. side. When Saka got picked for fucking um, England, England, it they played him as a left wing back. for left back, yeah. yeah. His breakout season was a left back. Look. Why are you not going to go put him into that position? He's ca- he's more than capable of playing that role, yeah. He's not doing it up on the right hand side, yeah. Where he's playing him on the right wing now. He's not doing it, blood. He is not doing it, blood. He... There's no confidence in Saka right now. He's going to the he's going to the byline and then he's cutting back and coming. He's coming. He's cut, looking for Odegaard, looking for Smith Rowe, looking for Chambers. He's not doing what he was doing earlier in the season when he was getting that ball and driving straight to the box. Do you understand? Or driving to the byline and trying to put a ball in. He's not doing that now. He's mm. driving to the byline and cutting back. Do you understand? So put him at left back, blood. Left. Put him at left back, bro. And then you put the likes of Martinelli into the fucking mm. team, blood. You understand? Because when you put Martinelli into the team, fucking that frees up the whole front line yeah. now, bro. Because then you got you got a Pepe, you got a Martinelli, you got an Abba, a Smith Rowe or an Odegaard. Odegaard. Bro, that is a Lacazette maybe. That is a threat, bro. Yeah. Do you understand? That and it's very dynamic as well. Because they can interchange. You understand? You got this fucking Sabios playing in the in the midfield, just getting badded up, blood. Jacker getting terrorized that left back blood. Man. Saka's playing dog shit as as, as as a right winger, bro. Like, bro, what? It, it's not hard, bro. Yeah. Like, you, you're, bro. This job is too big for this, yeah. man. Yeah, and I said before, yeah, I said even like, excuse me, even after the Slavia Prague game when I was sitting in London, and I went on AFTV and Robbie was like, yo, da 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 da. I was like, bro, yeah, we beat them 4-0, but I'm still not fully confident we can win this Europa League because what Slavia Prague did to us in the first leg, yeah? You understand? Was embarrassing, yeah. bro. The fact we had to fight back is against Slavia. Of all fucking, fucking Slavia teams, Prague, blood. Do you understand? We're fighting back Benfica Slavia. when they went ahead against us. Olympiakos. You get me? Villarreal's a better team. Yeah. Yeah? They will come to Emirates and get the away goal. Yeah? When they get the away goal, that's our away goal cancelled. Yeah? If we beat them 2-1, it goes to extra time. Yeah? They score once in extra time, we got to score two. Yeah. We haven't won a game. Yeah? Our last win was fucking... Let me fucking Sheffield. get it. Sheffield United 3-0, no blood. No, Slavia Prague was Slavia, the last oh, win. Slavia. Yeah, it was Slavia, then it was Sheffield, then Slavia. Yeah, Slavia Prague was the last win. We've had a draw, a defeat. Sorry, a draw and two defeats, blood. Yeah? Fucking Fulham. Yeah? Fulham. Yeah? One, one. Fucking Fulham. When you got in Ketia, celebrating like he's fucking scored the last minute winner in the Champions League final. Yeah? Everton. A fucking idiot, Leno. Mm. And now Villarreal. Do you understand? You imagine, yeah, in the last 
Let me let me break it. To, let me break it down to you like this, yeah. In the last one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. In the last eight games, yeah. In the last nine games. In the lo- in the last nine games, yeah. In our last nine games, yeah. We have only beaten Slavia Prague and Sheffield United. That's the only teams we've beaten in the last nine games, bro. In the last nine games, brother. Yeah. The last big team we beat was Tottenham on March 14th. March 14th. Yeah. What's the date today, brother? <laughs> We're in, the 30th, 30th of, of April. April. Yeah. We have had two wins since the 14th of March, blood. Look at the teams that we fucking beat. Bottom of the league, Sheffield United, who are getting put in the split by every blood clot, buddy. And Slavia Prague. And that was only because of what the Slavia Prague game yeah. was about. Do you understand? Look at that. We fucking, we lost 1-0 to Olympiacos. We drew 3-3 with West Ham. We lost 3-0 to Liverpool. Drew 1-1 with Slavia Prague. Beat Sheffield United 3-0. Beat Slavia 4-0. Drew with Fulham. Lost to fucking Everton. Everton. Lost to Villarreal. Next four games, Newcastle away, fighting for their lives. Dangerous game. Villarreal at home. You know how we are at home already, blood. Yeah? West Brom at home. Chelsea away. Especially with the way, like, Newcastle, with the spirit that they're playing, that never say die. Thank God Willow can't play. Exactly. Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. Thank the fucking Lord, mate. And then when you look on the other side of the Europa League, you got Man United putting Man in a spliff, blood. 6-2. 6-2. They were 2-1 down at half time, blood. Yeah? But whatever Ole said, or whatever Ole found at half time, because I think he found Viagra at half time. <laughs> you understand? Because he finally got over the semi, blood. You understand? I think, yeah. I understand. I think, I think the Viagra arrived late, blood. You understand? You know them late deliveries, blood. It's, it's you understand? Two years later. You know when they say the delivery's coming at eight <laughs> o'clock. No, sorry, you know when they say the delivery's coming at seven forty-five, blood. Uh, and then it turns up an hour later, yeah. blood. You understand? It came, it came true at eight forty-five, blood. You get me? And then the second half, Man United proceeded to put them in a zubi, blood. You understand? Bruno Fernandez with two, Edison Cavani with two, a great goal from Pogba, oh, uh, Mason Greenwood getting himself one as well. This tie is done now. Isn't yeah, it? now it's over. This you one is me. they can they can put on you know relax, put on their youngsters, just sit back when they go to Italy and one wait goal for the and final. let me get that's one that's away it. goal and that's all they really need. That's it. Ed and Jekyll getting a goal, obviously former Man City player, uh, Pellegrini as well mm-hmm. getting the penalty early on, but um, y- United roll on. You get me looking very very good. Uh, we must say so. Yep. Um, we might have to put a bit of um, a bit of respect on these on- pagans. I was gonna ask on, on, uh, on, the, on, the, on the PE teacher uh, where 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 is the fan base on him? Is he? Uh, are they they still want him out? What's the read on him? Yeah. I'm not sure where the fan base is on them. Um, I think the Oli out still want him out. Okay, and the Oli ins still want him in, but um, United have won um, one. They was on a good run of form until um, the Leicester defeat in the quarter final. Of the FA Cup, blood. You understand? I think they won five in a row in the Premier League, blood. You get me? United have been on a good run of form. They're, the thing with them is they're not consistent. They pick yeah. up form, then they drop, then they pick up form, then they drop. That's why I don't rate Ole, blood, because he can't get cons- a consistent tune out of that team. You understand? But United are doing well. You get me? They've got basically, basically, they got three quarters of their clock in the final, blood. You understand? Whereas we've got half of our club out of the fucking t- tournament, blood. You understand? And I don't know where we go from there um, when, if, sorry, we get knocked out, if we can't get the job done uh, back at the Emirates. I don't know where we go from there, blood. But, yeah, man. <sighs> Exciting times for an Arsenal fan, blood. Nah, not at all. You understand? Not fucking at all. We had the midweek Champions League as well. Uh, Real Madrid won. Chelsea won. Uh, <laughs> Chelsea will feel um, disappointed not to come out uh, with the win. Uh, Christian Pulisic, Captain America, uh, giving them the league. Uh, but Karim Benzema, blood, one of the greatest uh, strikers out there at this moment in time. Absolute Still clinical. Still ice cold, it. blood. 
You understand? And then you got Verna, bro. Timo Verna. You get me, bro. You see what I'm saying, bro? We have to get onto this Verna <laughs> you now, bro. Do you understand? Like, I don't care how dead we are, yeah? Your fucking striker Yo. is dead out, is dead, blood, yeah? Done out here, bro. R.I.P. to the striker I used to be. My career's over. The guy just runs like a fucking headless chicken. Brother, man, I'm saying, No oh, quality. How can he give Courtois any chance in that predicament, bro? Like, unbelievable, bro. <laughs> like, when are they going to drop him? Yo, turn off your blood clot phone. Oh, who is it? Oh, my God, it was there. <laughs> <laughs> no, but in your defense groups, Josh is initially at the... I saw him turn it off at the end, at the beginning of the show. He, he was dead buzz off. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Damn. But anyway, Damn. Timo Werner? Yeah. <laughs> you were saying that? But Timo Werner, Let's blood. forget that. I like. Let's forget that one, blood. You know what I'm saying? He's, he, he's a joke of a player, yeah, blood. Do you understand? Like, I, I think Chelsea fans have to realise now that he is not the one, bro. Because yeah. that miss, yeah, that could cost them, bro. Do you understand? 2-1, yeah? Bro, different. It's over. Two away goals. Zidane's going to come at these men differently mm. at the bridge, blood. Do you understand? They're going to come differently. You get me? Ha- Hazard. Going back to the bridge. He's fit now. You understand? Imagine Hazard's the one to lick See, them out. The, that would be awesome. That would be incredible. It's written in the stars, isn't it? <sighs> great story ending. <laughs> that would be a great story book ending. And then the big one. Um, obviously, we did a watch along for this. Well, I did. This guy was doing Hillbilly. Yeah, was, big up everybody that tuned in. Back. <laughs> uh, big up Heineken. Um, Heineken. Big up Heineken uh, for presenting uh, the watch along. Um, my choice for... The Champions League, uh, two one defeat at home to Pep's boys. Mm-hmm. You understand now? Game of two halves. Pochettino blood. When it went one nil, yeah, I thought, okay, they're gonna go yeah. now, innit? They're gonna go two three. He just stopped, especially with the way Neymar was playing. Neymar too. was on smoke on that first half. My guy Mbappe God. though, he was. <laughs> yeah, I me. Mean, have you seen Mbappe? Oh yeah. Like, is he in there? <laughs> Can't find him. Like, he's my guy, bro, but I gotta be real with it, blood. Like, I don't know where is he in there. Di Maria was out there. Di Ma- actually, Di Maria was the most impressive for me. Di Maria was on smoke until it went 1 1, and then he just, the life got sucked out of him, blood. But you have to look at Navas for that first goal, and even mm, the second goal, blood. You have to blame the wall, the wall. but he gap. can, he still should be saving that, blood. Coming through that gap, troops? He still should be saving you that. You see blood. that? Lit, this though. is Kilo Navas, but we're not talking about fucking Bird Leno, bro. I get that, but you yeah, we're talking about one of the see. we're talking about one of the top top goalkeepers in world football, blood. Do you understand? True. Like he's played numerous Champions League finals, blood. One numerous Champions League finals for Real Madrid. Obviously, he lost last year for PSG. But you get me? Did PSG bottle it? Was was did 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 uh, the Pochettino Tottenham come out in him? Because for me, I think they bottled it, bro. I yeah. think Mbappe bottled it. I think Mbappe was shocking the whole game. The, the way I they- think the only people that turned off for PSG was Neymar. Uh, um, Dimaria, Dimaria and I think Verratti was like good as well game, yeah. Verratti was good in the first, first half, half and Paredes was good in the first half but second half they were non-existent bro City bossed it De Bruyne got in the yeah. game for me That's it. Riyad Mahrez was absolutely game. and I told you about Mahrez but I mean you try to bring Saka in there man <laughs> I apologize you understand <laughs> because, yo, man was saying in the comments yo tell <laughs> Zaha yo tell Zaha <laughs> come outside blood you understand <laughs> niggas say they outside you understand <laughs> I put my hands up on Mares. But yeah, no, that first half, they were very tight. They kept that. They they, they didn't let Foden, Foden and... Uh, Foden and, was and, poor first Yeah, and Gundogan even operate in I that, in that Foden, area. I personally think Foden had a poor game. They, they, they couldn't operate. He missed two sitters, bro. Yeah. But they couldn't operate in those spaces. Yeah. Verratti, and, uh, Verratti and his partner literally were bossing that midfield. And then it just opened up in the second half. But whatever Pep told them at, at the break, blood. Yeah. You understand? It, 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 it worked, bro. You get me? And uh, City... Uh, have the upper hand. Both English sides, well, all English sides apart from apart Arsenal from Football Club, have the upper hand in their European games. But oh, what a fucking surprise, blood. Mikel Arteta back again, blood. Tapas, blood, Clark Pulis. Fucking idiot. Yeah. Now, before we get into um, the previews for this weekend, uh, we have an interview with a uh, MLS Hall of Famer. Like I said, apologies to my LAFC brothers because obviously he's from op block but we are going to get into that interview right about now so we have a special guest uh this week you understand um he is a la galaxy uh legend 
You get me? Apologies to my LAFC fans because obviously <laughs> when I'm on the West Coast, I'm not gonna lie. I'm on the black and gold side. You get me? So they're not, some of them are not gonna be happy with this one. You get me? But you understand? We we, we gotta do what we gotta do. He's a Hall of Famer though. Right? You feel me though? Like we, we we have to pay homage. Like he is a Hall of Famer, but it's it's not some any any player. Really. Uh. Like fact, like obviously you get me. No introduction needed, Mister Kobe Jones. Blood. You understand? How you doing, bro? Uh, absolutely fabulous, guys. Uh, thanks for having me. But I say you shouldn't be apologizing to the LAFC fans. You should be apologizing to me. <laughs> <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> hey, he, he coming with the fire. <laughs> Love that. So, I, so, so um, obviously, how you been keeping through like quarantine and um, all of that? Uh, it, it, it's been something else, you know, it has been difficult, especially, you know, I got two young boys, you know, at 10 and seven years old and having them doing the virtual schooling at home for a full year whoo that, that, that ain't easy let me tell you you know yeah because it, it, it's yeah, been because a struggle it's, it's it, it is a big difference because obviously when i was back in london i've got two boys as well five and eight so even trying to get them to even look at the computer yeah. is 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 a myth because all they want to look at when it is a computer is fortnite <laughs> yep <laughs> that's all it is dad i want v bucks dad i want v bucks that's all it is I, I i know that most of your money probably goes on v bucks as well knowing that the age they're at <laughs> yes indeed yes v bucks all the time and you know it just makes you realize how these these businesses are making all that money i was like oh it's free no problems yeah you can play it and then all of a sudden you see Spending wait it's 10 bucks here 15 here 20 there next thing you know you spin over a g I'm you know, ten, hey, you know in it year. <laughs> the pocket just adds up. I'm telling you, <laughs> back row season. It is a madness. Oh yeah. But um, <laughs> let's get back to um. Like, I want to let the people them know about you fully in it. Like, maybe some of my, my my English audience might not know about like your like your background and whatnot. So obviously, you was born in Detroit. Yeah. But you yeah, grew up in South Carolina. No, no. South California. I grew up in uh, Southern California. Southern California. In, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Southern California. I I was born in Detroit. You know, and, and look, I left there when I was three months old, you know, but whenever I need to claim rough and tumble, you know, I claim the eight mile and all that, you know, <laughs> the motor city. <laughs> I grew up uh, just north of L.A., just north of Los Angeles at three months old. My parents moved out. So I, I'm a I'm a Southern California native, you know, Los Angeles area. That's home for me. So are your family native uh, Detroit? Is that what your no, family are? family is uh, actually from Mobile, Alabama, deep south. Oh, wow. Uh, deep south is, as it gets. You know, like we do like family reunions and all that stuff. Everyone's going down to Mobile, Alabama. You know, that's uh, that's about as deep as it gets as people don't realize. That's like, kind of like the heart of, of the south and a lot of the struggles and everything that have happened over the decades, you know, is, is right there. So like when you was growing up as a kid, like what made you like get into, fo like, into football? Uh, well, for me, you know, uh, growing up in the, in the early seventies, it was that, that first big boom of soccer within the, or football within the United States. And we, everyone played, you know, everyone would go and be part of AYSO. Everyone plays and goes out there. And I think I look back and I realized my parents were just like, okay, this kid's got a lot of energy. Let's get him out and do something where he can <laughs> yeah. just run around, you know, nonstop and get some of that energy out. So uh, being part of that first generation, that AYSO generation, you know, I just started playing it and loved it. You know, I loved running around. I loved kicking the ball. You know, so I just uh, kind of, you know, as most kids, if you're somewhat good at something, you stick with it and keep doing it. So, who are, who are some of your heroes? Who are uh, who are the guys like who got you into soccer? Who who did you look up to uh, players wise? Because obviously you said the seventies in it, and then that's yeah. the great Brazil team. So yeah, yeah, it is, and you know what's funny? And, th and this will be interesting. And this I'm going to give you guys a little bit of some, some learning here. Uh -huh, okay. You, you know, in the United States at that time, you couldn't see soccer on TV. There was no, there wasn't any, any soccer on TV. Like if I wanted to see soccer, it was like, okay, there's a Mexican restaurant that's putting a game on through satellite and everyone had to pay like 10 or $15. Now my parents, <laughs> my dad there's no chance he was paying you know money to go see you know any any of these games he, yeah. first off he was kind of like soccer what's uh, what's this thing you know yeah. yeah just go out and have fun with it so it was it was very different so a lot of my generation we didn't grow up with uh, a lot of soccer heroes you know maybe you know maybe on the east coast there is you know there's a, a big contingent when you're talking about the cosmos and all that stuff but out in the la area it was just kind of like we played the game for the fun of it you know, maybe that's getting back to like the, 
the roots of the sport because it wasn't like, okay, this guy inspired me. No, it was like, I, I loved playing. Now, of course I had heard about, you know, like Pele, you know, and those types of things, but um, it, there wasn't like a, a certain inspiration. It was just for the love of the game. You know, as they like to say, I like kicking the ball around. I like being with my friends and really getting down to that grassroots level of it all. I mean, even your style of football, um, there is like, but when you say you used to go to um, Mexican venues to watch um, the games, because obviously there's a big football heritage from Mexico, Mexico yeah. from South America as well. So your your game as well as a player was kind of like, a, like was kind of like the flair player. Did you build, right. was it that reason why? Because a lot of your friends were like, were like your friends like the skillful kind of type with the step overs and all of that and the winger, yeah. like you understand with the pace and that. Because how yeah, did you how did you start to build your game? You know, you you kind of you just kind of learn it, you know, when when you're out there and kind of try to figure out what works, you know, and kind of look. I knew that I was fast, you know, and that was one of the things. And, and a lot of people that knew me back in the day would say that you, you know the kind of like a couple of jokes about me is that you know I just kick it kick it past them and run, you know, yeah. <laughs> that, that was it. And beat most of the people to the ball. And the other thing was, you know, is that they called me like a weeble wall that I don't fall down. So a lot of people would kind of try to hit me, but I have very good balance. So I was able to stay and keep going. As far as the, the other development, I, I slowly started developing my game, you, you know, when I was in that, uh, you know, preteen, you know, early teen years, just by, you, you know, just some of my friends seeing what they did, seeing what worked, you know, and, just the style that maybe they brought into it and seeing how I could compliment, you know, on, on some of those things I had, I always had pretty decent teams, you know, at the younger, younger ages and a lot of the players on those teams, like I could name some of the names. They're very skillful, very technical, mm. you know, and maybe it's because like uh, some of the coaches, and this is probably where a, a little bit of that experience comes in. The coaches that I had, one coach was a Dutch coach mm. at a young, a young age, or I shouldn't say a Dutch coach. He was Dutch, yeah. you know, and his son played on the team and he was the coach of the team. The next coach that I had, I can remember he was a uh, German background, you know? So there's a lot of, I guess I, I took all these different experiences that I didn't know at the time, you know, was a certain style of play and just kind of brought it into my game because these, uh, these these coaches that I had had the experience from having you know grown up in different countries and just kind of brought it here. So well, uh, did you play any other sports uh, other than football as a kid growing up? Before we get to the college, yeah, I, I ran track. Okay, nice. I did. I ran. Tra I I loved what, track. Hundred meter. <laughs> what? 100 yeah, hundred meter. meters. What did you 100 run hundred meter in? Oh, geez. Uh, well, we did yards back in the day, so I think it was like. Uh, 10 something, 10, wow. 10, oh, Jesus, that's nine, right. something like that. <laughs> 10, 9. That, is fast. that ain't yeah, too bad, you know. Yeah, I was, I, I, I did pretty good in it. Yeah. <laughs> but in, in track and field, I did track and field all the way through high school. I did, uh, I did it all except one year when my dad forced me to play baseball. <laughs> and, so your, uh, your dad was a big baseball fan. Yeah, he had like, he liked basketball, baseball, and like the traditional, traditional American sports, which are absolutely fantastic. But, you know, I was forced to do it. And, I mean, you can imagine, imagine my, my sports, you know, soccer, you know, and track. Yeah. And then I was doing baseball. Yeah. So there's a lot of sitting around you yeah. Know, yeah. <laughs> where my mind kind of goes off in the other things. So I, I didn't, I didn't do too well at baseball at all. It, it wasn't my game. UCLA uh, division one. Uh, I, I uh, read that you were a non-scholarship, uh, non-scholarship athlete with that. You want to talk about that experience going to a D one school, big program like that? Yeah. Uh, uh, for, you know, when you're talking about the college game, you know, there were some top teams, you know, back in the day and UCLA was one of them. They had won it in 85, just a few years before and 88, you know, when I came in, you know, uh, it was a strange situation, right? I wasn't recru recruited anywhere to go to uh, any colleges. Um, it was really my mom that, you know, kind of uh, said, you know what, go to UCLA because for for me, for college, about, okay, I, I'm going to apply. And I applied to a bunch of different schools and got in. And I, I talked to my mom, where should I go? And was, she's like, go to UCLA. It fits you. You have the opportunity where they have a soccer team and you can just go and try out, you know? And that's exactly what I ended up doing was going going out there, as as, as you mentioned, as a walk-on. Yeah. And became um, a legend. That process. Yeah. <laughs> became a legend. <laughs> What's that? Sorry? I was like, you became a UC, uh, UCLA legend after well, that well, that's what it, that's what it was about. I, I walked on and it was the most heavily recruited class 
um, the best recruited class in 88. And I ended up, you know, um, becoming, you know, one of the main players, you know, throughout, you know, really fantastic. And that's why I always tell people, you know, some coaches can easily overlook talent, you know, at various stages of the game. That's why you got to find the right spot for you because there's, a, there's plenty of people, you know, one coach can think you're fantastic and the other coach can say that like, a coach said about me, worst player that he's ever seen, you know, play the game. And they said that in high school for me. So that's why I say, you know what, just keep, keep going, keep pushing. So um, is that when you got spotted by the, uh, uh, the national team? Uh, yeah, it was the, I have to give credit to the coach at UCLA. Once he finally uh, bought into me, uh, he started <laughs> pushing me a little bit into the the different realms of like uh, making the Olympic team, you know, and, and all those things and, and the national B teams and started putting me in those types of scenarios because I had never been, you know, in any of that. Like when I was growing up, the farthest I got was to my district level and I was cut all the time. I was cut twice, you know, I never made it past that. So uh, once I started doing well at UCLA, Ziggy Schmidt kind of pushed me along the route. So I started going to the Olympic festivals and doing well there. And from my time at the Olympics at 92 in Barcelona, I had a good showing. And that's when the national team coach kind of called me up and said, hey, we want to bring you in and start planning and, and prepping for the World Cup in 94. And then obviously when you got that call up for 94, it's in your, it's in your country. Wow. Like... Yeah. How, how did it feel like you knew that on, on opening day, you had a chance of walking out in that open? Like, uh, that, it must have like sent chills down your spine, like the, pr like, the yeah, proudness it, of it your was, family. It's, it's my game. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's why you play the game. That's, that's a yeah. right there. Like, yeah, no, the no, players no, that's no, in that no. World Cup as well, Maradona's last one, Roberto Baggio. Run, that's, 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 that's when um, the phenomenon came to, um, came to everyone's eyes. You get me, Romario. That was a mad. You had some real dons, like some real legendary players in that World Cup. Like, how, how did it feel to be Look, amongst it, the greats? It was, it, it was amazing. It, I mean, you can't put it into the into words. I mean, the most you can talk about the build up to the World Cup, that whole process that we went to went through as a team, bonding as a team, understanding the pressures that were on us because up until that point, every host nation had gotten out of the first round yeah. and there was an expectation, don't embarrass your country, you know, make yeah. sure that you get out of that first round. You know, there, there were all these types of pressures and just the highs and lows and the glory of it, as you said, your family, you know, to be a part of it, you know, part of the World Cup and seeing you step out on the field. And, and, I, and, and I will tell you this, is, and you kind of touched on it, you know, there were some legends, you know, some legendary players there. And for me, I think probably the biggest moment for me was um, that July 4th game uh, going up against Brazil up at Stanford Stadium. And I, and I started that game and walking out and just, you know, right next to Brazil and, and seeing Romario and Bebeto, you know, walking out. As they, as they hand. I don't know if they, they if people remember, they used to walk out. They walk out hand in hand. Holding hands. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Come, I right, come on, bro. Like, Only real ones know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like, that's some of the stuff where you're just like, that's pretty cool, man. Yeah. We should be doing that. Yeah. You know? It just shows the, the bonding and the yeah. unity of that group, you know, and they they were something special. They were, they were something special. But to play in that match and to walk out, you know, against that group and seeing, I don't even remember how many fans, 70, 80, I don't know. Yeah, because you've got that. big stadiums yeah. in America. Oh, full stadium, full stadiums. And seeing, I was surprised, all the American flags out there. Yeah. It was it was something, it was something to that, that I will never forget, you know, to this day. It, it was absolutely fantastic. Did you get anyone's shirt from that game? Uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm sure I got somebody's shirt. Here's, here's the problem. Everyone always asks me what shirts that I have. I, look, I represented my country 164 times. That's what I'm saying. You are the most cap player. player. I, I got so many shirts. It's, it's ridiculous that I can't remember. It's like a, a few of them. I look, I'm like, whose shirt is, what team is this that I'm playing? <laughs> I'm playing. <laughs> <What's this? laughs> uh, it, it's crazy. It's absolutely crazy. Who, so like what shirt? was the one that you so like when you played an opposition what shirt was the one that you was like yo i need to get this shirt you know i've always tried to get like the romarios and the babettos and the zadons you know all that but i never got them and someone would always beat me to them you know who got them <laughs> you're, you're elbowing people out of the way to try and get it you know but uh you know so it, it look part of it i i joke with that a little bit but for me you know a lot 
I, I love the idea of trading shirts, but it, it was never a big deal to me because, I, and maybe this is my personality, I always thought of them as competition, you know, out on the field. And I, and if we would lose the game or whatever, I would be upset, and that wouldn't even <laughs> that wouldn't even come across my brain. It would just be like, oh yeah, yeah, whatever, you know, that that type of thing. It was, it was all about competition and just the, the experience of of playing against the people. So then you got spotted by obviously Coventry City. Cove City, yeah. Uh, now, like, obviously, that must have been like a whole world changing. Like, that is a that, that, that's a game changer, bro. Oh, yeah. Because Coventry, see, I've been Coventry in it. Obviously, uh -huh. I used to go up and down away. We used to play at Coventry, and bro, up there is a different thing, bro. It's just a bit further than, but I think it's just a bit further than Brom, or it's just before Brom. But up there is different, bro. You understand? You've <laughs> gone from you've gone from surfboards and and Palm the Beach, Jimmy. Jimmy Hollywood, and now <laughs> you're getting like you're getting burnt fish and chips blood. You understand? It's, it's not like London. It's not like London. Like you get me? Like where you you understand? But let me tell you something about Coventry though. Coventry at that time were one of the like founding main Premier League teams, bro. Highfield Road was an intimidating place to go, blood. And you had some intimidating man in that team. You had one man that he will twerk for. He will do absolute madness for Anything. his fellow countryman, Peter Inlove. So I'm going to let him go oh, first, yeah. isn't it? Because yeah. he's Unlove. been waiting for this part, bro. So I am, I'm originally born and raised, uh, born and raised in Zimbabwe. And you shared a locker room with, with my hero. The guy, the guy is, he's a God back home. Like, you, you yeah. know, we've seen what he does on the field. Absolute magician. How was it sharing a locker room with him? Uh, it was, it was, it was great. Uh, look at, Peter or Nutty, he was he was absolutely fantastic. He he was uh, a bit quiet, you know, but he had that um, like you. What would you call it? That quick wit, you know, where it was the quiet thing, and then he'd say something special, like, and everyone would just bust out laughing. You're like, <laughs> you're like, we didn't even think you were paying attention, you know, over there. <laughs> but he's got that. He had that quick wit, you know, in the locker room that was absolutely fantastic with Peter. Uh, it, it was fun, and and he did some things on the field, like you said, where where it would just amaze you two or three players around him and next thing you know you know he's skated through a ball and put the ball in the in the upper corner you know somehow some way but he was he was fantastic he was a, a, a good friend you know during that time during my time there at Coventry absolute legend I tell you Dion yeah. Dublin as well um obviously he joined um there from uh the Man United uh youth um, I've I've met Dion a few times. He he, he is he's a character. That we'll just we'll, he is a character, blood. You understand? But he oh, yeah. could you see in him like that he could go on and and do what he kind of did in the Premier League from that from that age? Because was you kind of shocked that Man United got rid of him, or do you think he could have made I, it at I United? I I didn't know too much about uh, Dion before then, but when he came there, you know, seeing his abilities and some of the things that he did just that first season with at, at Coventry was absolutely amazing. I was just like, "What is this? What is this guy doing?" You know, this is he's pulling things out of the hat. I still remember the I can't remember the team, but this bicycle kick that he did it from the top of the eighteen, putting the ball in the back of the net. It, it's it was one of those things where you just where you can feel and see that somebody is in the zone. And that season for him, I think you could just tell that anytime the ball was going to go to his foot, he was going to find a way to really, really uh, make something happen. And that's, that was from him, from Peter and the connections of the various players on the team. It, it was, it was uh, something to see and to behold. Uh, we, I mean, even so, you know, it was, it, unfortunately, it was a little bit of a struggle, you know, <laughs> throughout the season, but we did find a way, I think because of the talent, mm -hmm. you know, that was brought in. Gordon Strachan as well. He was part of that team as well. Um, known as like a little terrier. He'll bite around your ankles and all that. Did he always have um, leadership skills from that time? Because obviously he went and um, he went on to do uh, take on a few managerial posts. He actually managed uh, Coventry as well. Did yeah, Gordon uh, came in like halfway through the season uh, when when I was right when the, because you had you know Phil because Neal at that time there wasn't um, a transfer window. You could get just people any time. I swear at that point. Yeah, it was it, just people coming in all, all yeah. over. You had Big Ron Atkinson came in, you know, to take over the club. He brought in Gordon Strachan. Uh, the, the Gordon, yeah, definitely a leadership role within within the club and organization. So I I, I didn't have much time with him. I had that time uh, uh, the last few months, you know, with him there. But you could see, you know, right away that he had that ability to really um, 
take lead and take control. And I, I don't think it was too long after that, that he ended up being the manager. Yeah. He had that kind of like dual role. Like yeah. Player, player manager. Situ- situation. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then um, you left there and you trained, you went to train at um, Cologne. You went over to Germany and then um, you got a move to Vasco da Gama. To Brazil. Yeah, Vasco, yeah. Yeah. Down in Brazil, you know. So. What's the so life like in Brazil? Is it as lit as they say it is? <laughs> <laughs> So, so take a look at this. I went from basically the from L.A. to Coventry to Rio, you know? So, <laughs> Not bad. <laughs> went, Not uh, bad. <laughs> the only L in there is Coventry. Coventry. If, if, if you did L.A., London, and Rio, that's a tour. That is a yeah. tour, bro. <laughs> That is well, well, it's tour. country, you know, Cuff City, you know, it's a good one. Cuff City, it, it, look, I love it. it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it, it was, it was good. It, it was good. I mean, I was living right on uh, Copacabana Beach, you know, for a while in Barate Uh It was, it was fantastic. It was, um, this, this was all pre MLS starting. So I knew that when I was going down there, I was only going to be there for like the seven, eight months, mm-hmm. eight month period. But that time down there was special. It was just seeing such a difference in the way the game can be addressed. You know, in England, it was very, okay, it, it's a workmanlike attitude. You get out, yeah. you do your job, you sort it out, get it in the mixer, you know, all this type of stuff. In Brazil, it was such a... Um, culture change. A, yeah, culture change, but more of a casual uh, casual atmosphere about everything, like with trainings and, and stuff like that. But it was, as a coach of mine used to say, it was like serious fun. You know, that's that's how it was. It's like everything was was supposed to be fun and you're supposed to enjoy it. But just to understand it is serious, you know, when it comes down to it. So it was just uh, very weird and strange to see the different outlooks on on uh, football. And it was it, I I think at that point it really showed me that there's so many different ways and different uh, different ways to play this game, different ways to look at this game and really kind of enjoy it in a variety you know, a variety of different settings. And then obviously everything comes full circle. You came home. Always come home. You always come home, right? You know, <laughs> never forget where you came from. Yeah, so I came back to Los Angeles when the uh, MLS started in 96, uh, helped start that league and, you know, had the had the joy of being part of that first game in Los Angeles when, you know, at that time, people were still wondering, you know, what's it going to be like? You know, are we going to have people coming out to the game? Is there going to be support for the game? You know, I remember talking uh, to our uh, general manager, Danny Villanueva, and I was asking Matt, so what are we going to have in the first game? How many people? And they're saying, well, ah, we're not sure, maybe 20,000, you know, 25,000 if we're lucky. But don't worry, you know, we're going to tarp it, you know, because we're at the Rose Bowl that holds like 80,000, you yeah. know, 80,000, so they were going to tarp the front and just push everyone down. He's also, we're going to, it's going to seem like it's a good crowd. And we're just like, okay, well, 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 we hope it's, we hope it's better than that, but we'll see. And then slowly, you know, as the beginning of the week, middle of the week, it got, Oh, it might be 30,000 end of the week. Yeah. I think it's going to be like 35, maybe 40 if we're lucky. And I remember we, we met beforehand at the, at the hotel we all kind of had the meal and everything and got together. And then we took a little bus down into the Rose Bowl. And if you haven't been there, the, the Rose Bowl actually sits in like a little bowl valley. So you come down the ramp and you come down the hill into the valley. And I was looking at the Rose Bowl Stadium and the parking out front. And I was like, oh, my God, there there is way more than 30,000, <laughs> you know, here at this at, at this stadium. I remember driving on the little bus through and people you know, hitting the side of it and just going like cheering for us. And, and I guess, you know, they're expecting like 25, 30,000, but the walk up, the walk up was like a 30, 35,000. So we ended up having 67,000, you know, about 67,000 people come to this game, you know, the opening game when they're expecting 25 or 30. And you can imagine that they were, they were not prepared you know, for that type of uh, influx where I remember a few things. Let me tell you about it. I remember the, during the match, when there was a break, I remember seeing the fans that were put up high above rip the tarps, rip the tarps off and start coming down so that they could get closer to the game. <laughs> wow. We're not having it. We're going to be a part of it. They wanted to be closer to it. And I remember when we won 
I, I was fortunate enough to uh, score the first goal, you know, for the Galaxy. We ended up, ended up winning that game. And I remember it, it was like, I don't know if you've seen the movie Victory, right? It was <laughs> it was like that where people charged the field yeah. and just no, not enough security. People just charged onto the field and were cheering for us and everything and grabbing us and pulling us. And I heard after that when the final whistle blew at that game, there were still people in line on the freeway trying to get into the match. That's how how crazy that game was. Mm-hmm. How unprepared they were, but how many people, more people came than they expected. And at that point, you was the only LA team because wasn't um, LAFC Chivas before? Yeah, yeah. At that time, there was it was only uh, just the Galaxy. Chivas came, you know, years later, mm-hmm. and then then Chivas went defunct because they had a. a, a I, I believe a distorted way of trying to do it. Cause I mean, if you want to be a Chivas USA with only, you know, Mexican players or, or just claiming yourself Chivas when Chivas in Mexico only has Mexican players on it, you you've uh, shrunk your fan base where you're only going to have Mexican fans. Then you shrunk your fan base anymore because it's only going to be Chivas fans. And then you shrunk your fan base even more because those Chivas fans only think that Chivas Guadalajara are Guadalajara is the real team. Yeah. So they didn't do it right. So that team went defunct. And then a few years later, you know, obviously LAFC came back and, and taking over for that um, MLS spot. Who was the first um, big player that came to the Galaxy? Me. Apart from you. <laughs> man, come on, man. No, no. I mean, no, no, no. Not like that. Not like that. Not like that. Like from, um, from Europe. Was it Bex? From overseas? Was it Bex? Beckham, yes, yes. If you're talking about from overseas, Beckham, yeah. You played, yeah. uh, you played two months with him, right? Uh, no, I played a year. Was it a I, year? I played, uh, yeah, I played a full year with uh, with Beckham. I mean, I mean, it felt like two months because he was injured quite a bit. But, uh, um, uh, yeah, I played a year. It was great. It was a it was a great experience, you know, spending that time with him. Um, you, you know, over that year, I ended up retiring, you know, just after that and coaching for a little bit. Uh, but yeah, he was, uh, he changed the dynamic of MLS where it, it actually brought world attention, you know, to the game where people were actually paying attention to MLS and the galaxy from overseas. And it also here in, 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 in the U S just more people that aren't soccer fans just wanted to see what he was doing and what he was a part of. So that just brought in more of a fan base, broadened it. He he has a wand of of a right foot, blood. <laughs> it's his own <laughs> wand. Oh, I, 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 that's why they say bend it like Beckham, right? You know, it's, uh, he, he's he's got a fantastic right foot. It's it's unbelievable. Some of the things that I've seen him do. You know, there's you know there's. I was going to go on. Uh, I don't know if anyone's told this story, but I remember in training once that we were in Kansas City and we were playing. And this tells you we're playing at a baseball park, right? Where you know there's. Uh, you know, in, in American baseball in these division, uh, the lower divisions, they have like uh, kind of like these big signs up. And sometimes the signs have like, like, uh, I don't know, but the sign had a big hole in it. Right. You know, and Bex was probably a good like 40, 50 yards away. And he just aimed up, took a shot from distance at the sign and it went right through the hole. And it, and it, and it was just, everyone there is just like, you gotta be freaking kidding me. You know, it just added to the legendary status of that right foot of his, where he just, uh, you know, put that right through the sign. And I don't think many people have talked about that, one, but it's absolutely amazing. And I can believe that he's one of the few where he's got yeah. like, he has like, you know, that sub zero vision uh-huh. where like, oh, oh my days, bro. You, you heard a lot of stories out of the Man United training grounds about that, him hitting back of people's heads. Back of people's at, at like heads. 60 yards that's what I'm saying. That. Like when you lot was playing, like say you was like walking off the training ground, was he the type of guy like to see you and just hit in the back of the head, like long range, beam. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh yeah. For fun. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. <laughs> for sure. That, that, I mean, it's that, uh, that joking around, but I mean, that's the nature of sports, right? You know, anyone that can't take that then doesn't, uh, doesn't understand the game. You know, you're supposed to be having a joke with the guys, you know, and, and fooling around. Look, when you talk about that stuff, you know, hitting the back of the head, shooting all, all this type of stuff, that that's what I miss the most mm. since I've retired. Wow. Not, not the crowds that yes, it, it, don't get me wrong. Fantastic. Walking out to the crowds in the States, but I miss the locker room more than anything those things that happen in the locker room where you can that stays in the locker room where you're just joking around having fun with the guys and all that that's what i miss beyond anything else since retirement who was the biggest joker in the locker room because you've had you've shared uh, 
the locker room with a couple jokers, bro. Yeah, like, like Brian McBride, he, see, he seemed like a madman when he was at Fulham. <laughs> like, I'm sure you had Dempsey in there as well. <laughs> you had Bex in there. But Bex was a bit bougie. Like, I can imagine Beckham, like, if you've done something to Beckham, he's like, why are you touching my, my gel? Who who like, who, who, who loses <laughs> who loses not over his gel, bro? Like who touched my gel, bro? You know what? You know what? Beckham was a big joker. You know, was he? He, wow. would play, he would play jokes on a lot of people, and people would put jokes on him too. I do remember. Really? I think I think it was Beckham did it to one of the players. And it, it could have been vice versa, but I truly do believe it was Beckham. Where I think Beckham super glued someone's shoes to the floor. <laughs> 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 where you couldn't get him up, you know? So, I mean, you know, sometimes these jokes go a little too far. People start getting a little angry, but, you know, yeah. I just simply remember that when we're trying to get the shoes up. Super that is good. awesome. <laughs> that is awesome. Because that's the thing, it gets wild in the locker room. Yeah, bro. yeah. It gets wild, <laughs> bro. So now you are a um, analysis for the LA Galaxy. Yes, yes. I'm doing uh, the regional broadcast for LA Galaxy, and I do some... Uh, how was that transition? Um, yeah, is it hard being? And, is like, it hard being unbiased? Uh, no, no, it, it, it's not. I, I mean, look, I think there's an understanding that when you are broadcasting for for a certain team specifically, that there's an understanding that you're tilted towards that side, not not as far as, oh yeah, they're fantastic all the time, but that you are trying to explain the game and give knowledge of the game to the galaxy fan of what's going wrong with that team and what's going right with that team, what they're doing right. So there's, there's a natural slant that way. Now, when I do, I do have to shift that uh, thinking when I do like national broadcasts, I do stuff with Fox sports and I have to do those, those national broadcasts where it could be two different teams where I try to do it even on both sides and just tell them exactly what's happening on the field and why this is working, and why it isn't. So it's just a, it's a little um, balancing act, you know, that everyone's got to, everyone's got to handle when you're in this broadcasting game. Now, like over the past uh, two, three weeks, uh, we've had this whole madness of, of, of um, this, uh, the Super League and um, a lot of um, European fans um, are not happy with, um, not Americans, like we're cool with Americans, like <laughs> it's, it's, it's because people seem to think like when I, when I go off like, oh, our troops don't like Americans. I, I'm, it's it's not that, bro. It's it's the American ownership and and the way they handle the British clubs and the European clubs. Um, when 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 this whole Super League, I call it Super League nonsense. When this whole Super League nonsense came out, how um, what was you thinking of it? Was you for it? Was you against it? Well, you know, from the beginning, when I had even heard the rumors about it back in the day, I was like, how is this going to work? You know, how, how is that going to going to happen? It seemed it seemed kind of auto confusing when you already because my first response was don't we already have champions league? You know, that that's, that's what it's about. And when you start talking about and this kind of goes into what you talk about the ownership and the people that were making the decisions, when you have a super league and you start bringing in, you know, all the top teams, you know, first off, and they're playing day in and day out, that gets boring. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if, if Real Madrid is playing man city, you know, three or four times, you know, or whatever. It, it's like, okay, well, I'm seeing it again. It, it, it's kind of like, it's the same old thing, mm -hmm. you know? And I think that's one of the, the brilliant things of Champions League is that when you do see that matchup, you're just like, wow, this is amazing. This is this is something great and, and significant, you know? So I think that's one of the things that was missed in this whole, th this whole process of understanding that you don't want to take away the value of, the, of those matchups. And then secondly, something else, that that I was I was thinking about is who is determining who these super teams are, because if you go twenty years ago, some of these teams that were super teams now aren't super teams back then. Fuck. You know, if you're looking, I just saw something on uh, uh, I don't know, it was a Twitter or, or Facebook or Instagram where it said, oh, imagine what? Well, they said, quote unquote, the oil money from Man City mm -hmm. is like is like I think they lost to like. Fulham or some eight to one, you know, <laughs> 20 years ago where it's saying, oh, wait not, a second. Um, it was uh, Middlesbrough 6-1, last game of the season, Swengro and okay. Erickson. I remember okay. that. <laughs> I remember that like yesterday. I remember <laughs> because people all, it might have even, do you know what? It might have even been 8-1. I remember Alfonso Alves got a hat trick and he done the stiffest dance after he scored yeah. his first goal. <laughs> I was like, brother, you need some WD-40 or some whatever in your system, bro. But sorry to interrupt, carry on, bro. Yeah, no, but that, but that goes to what I'm saying is who determines what these teams are because it changes all the time you know that one team is 
better than the other and becomes like this super team. They're, they're, they're determining themselves that they are the super teams and no one else matters. You know, and that that's always a bit concerning for me. So as you could probably tell, I wasn't for it, you know, and I'm and I, I think it's very important that people understand that this game is for the fans. I think that's something else that was missed. It, it's very different um, when you have organizations or sporting organizations that are bought into and built from a billionaire or whatever right away and put in place and then the fans come in as opposed to a sporting organization that starts as a club from the people on the block. And then slowly over a hundred years, 200 years, it grows and becomes this massive organization where people are so deeply, deeply involved in that organization that it is part of their family, part of their, their life, that you are you can't treat those the same way in how you're going to deal with things, you know? And, and I think they kind of had a realization. And I think by all the apologies that you have seen put out there, I think they understand that they, they made a mistake that they, that they did not take a lot of those things into account. Now, nah, well said, man, I, I fully echo the comments right there, bro, because it's, 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 it's all about the fans, bro. Yep. Without the fans, football doesn't no work. Game. Soccer, it doesn't work, mm -hmm. bro. And I think that a big part to play in it was where, the fans are not allowed in the stadiums right now. So you can't protest in the grounds. They thought that they could sneak it in mm -hmm. and get away with it, but they never knew that the power of social media, if they done this like in the nineties or the two thousand, like early 2000s, they, there's a chance they could have got they away, with, away it. with it. Yeah. With the power of social media now, it cannot happen, bro. It cannot happen. But, but before I let you go, um, do you have any Premier League teams? Like, because obviously Coventry City, um, are, I think they're in League One at the moment. But um, yeah. do you obviously uh, you you must keep your eye on the Premier League? Is there anyone like you got your eye on? Like maybe I don't know, maybe Chelsea because of your boy Pulisic. <laughs> I I wouldn't say a specific team, but I do watch you know some some of those games. Obviously, Man City, the Liverpool stuff like that. Just as, just because it's the the top teams and they're entertaining to watch. You know, obviously you do want to see how Pulisic is doing. I mean, he's had you know got that goal within Champions League, so that that was fantastic to see. Um, and and I try to keep up. Uh, just with the American players, you know, and how they are doing overseas, because obviously I have the, the, uh, I guess I just want to see what the potential can be for the U S national team, you know, in the future as we're going to see that these players are continuing to compete and perform at the highest level. So uh, that that's really it for me. You know what? Uh, yeah. You know what? I have to, I have to hit him with one more blood because and he I, lined I, it. I got one more. Cause he Let's... lined it, bro. <laughs> so like the US team's actually looking kind of decent now. You got a few hitters in there. You got Dest, who's at um, Barca, Barcelona, Pulisic. Uh, you got the kid at Leipzig, and then, uh, Timothy Weir. Timothy and Weir. Him, and there's a few. Um, I, I'm, I'm sure there's a. Um, there's, ain't, ain't there a oh, player? what's it called? Uh, uh, Gio, Gio Reyna, yeah, Gio at Gio Reyna. Dort, at Dortmund. Weston McKinney. Weston McKinney. Well. Yeah, that's it. Weston McKinney. Do you f it, it, is Pulisic the leader of them? Is this like? Do you think like this could? Because I remember the time when there was like the likes of you, Dempsey, McBride. There was a couple of men. Boca, I think Boca Negro was in there as well. Now I think like this this is like another period where you got a few big hitters. Do you think that this is where the USA team starts to grow and people start to take them seriously on the international level? Yeah, I think I think this is a, a good point. You know, obviously the the qualifying for the Olympics was a disappointment and a setback because I think we could have had a first little look at you know, the potential of that group, because a, a lot of these, those players that you mentioned would have been able to play in the Olympics. They're exactly. like 23, 24, you know, so, so that would have been a first little glimpse into it. But looking at that group, I do think that like Pulisic is the, is the leader of it just by virtue of him being kind of like one of the first being brought into the national team and into that process. Um, this group is special and in a, in a different way than what people are thinking. What what I like to see, it, it harkens me back to like when I first got into the national team. The, it's not always about the individuals, it's about the group together, coming together as a team. Any team, I think a, a team can beat a bunch of individuals. And like back in the 94s, we were a good team because we were brought together in, in weird circumstances where we trained together for a year and a half leading up to the, to the World Cup. So we got tight and we bonded. Now this group, 
you know, they have this situation where I think social media has played a big part, even though that they are spread all over the place, they're starting to step out into these bigger teams, but they still stay in touch through social media. And I think that's something that's fantastic that actually allows them to keep together where you still see them joking and having fun with each other. So when they do come back together, they still feel like a group and it's tight knit. And that can, that I think more than anything else is going to allow them to take it to another level. Now, I look at the last World Cup qualifying, that, I, I believe that was a black swan moment. I think that was just that one thing where everything went against the U.S., you know, during that round. So I think they'll, I think the U.S. team will make it, you know, through this next qualifying stage into the World Cup. And I think there's a, a lot of potential there. And, and they'll be prime, prime age where you're talking 24s, 25s, 26, where they'll be able to run all day. Mm-hmm. <laughs> It's all final question. Uh, so actually, you kind of kind of hit on it, but I'm gonna pivot real quick. Talk about something that, that I thought was fantastic that you that you're doing. Apparently, you're part of a part of the ownership group. You're trying to bring uh, women's uh, women's football to to LA. You want to talk a little bit about that? I think that's that's phenomenal for the game. Love that completely. How's that experience? Yeah, when we, yeah. When we, like you said, with, with the women's game, I think that there's um, opportunity there, especially in the last World Cup. I thought we saw some fantastic games, and we're seeing the game grow internationally and just all the attention and here you know obviously within the united states the nwsl league is here and and i've been part of the ownership group angel city football club out here in los angeles bringing a team to los angeles in 2022 so it's one of those things that i wanted to be a part of where i think it's very important because i think the growth of the game is dependent upon everybody having that access to the game and the opportunities where you have little boys and girls, you know, 20 years ago, we're looking at, okay, just looking at all the, the, the guys playing soccer, but it, you know, the young girls want to play the game too. And we've seen now that there's a growing market, you know, for women playing the game. So as we see uh, the NWSL grow, the women's sport grow, you know, I think it's fantastic that we can bring a team here to Los Angeles and that, give that opportunity for young girls to have, young women to look up to brilliant that's it for me nah fa- um we just want to thank you again uh for coming on kobe um we really appreciate it um when, when this COVID thing hopefully goes maybe we, when, when we come out to la we can link up you can take me around la you can take me hollywood because obviously you're an la boy so you got a plug <laughs> and i need a plug i have a plug now in la i have a real plug in la now you get me I Kobe is my best friend now. You understand? <laughs> team, team, light skin. You already know, bro. You get me? Team hairline. Team, get me? Team, we don't get me. I was saying. <laughs> I'm with you. We'll get the we'll get the uh, convertible and cruise around down towards Malibu in the beach. I'm gonna hold there you on, that man. Come on, man. Now, nah, thanks again, bro, man. Thank you for your time. Uh, uh, thanks for having me. Appreciate you. So, Newcastle. On the weekend, um, 9 a.m. kickoff for us, blood. 9 a.m. kickoff for It's been a Sunday. while since the early ones, troops. <laughs> it's been a while. Um, I'm going to try to get Chef Donny to come in and make us breakfast. breakfast. You understand? Because he was supposed to come in last time, but he couldn't get the ingredients. So now I'm going to message him when we finish the pod and then he'll have more than enough time to get the ingredients. <laughs> no excuses this time, my brother. You understand? Full English breakfast business mm. because the game's going to be absolutely dire. You get me? Not Eric Dyer. It's going to be dire, blood. You get me? So, give me some food. I think, yum, you know? Mm. But um, going into this game, blood, obviously, I gave you the, the, a few stats earlier of, of our run. Uh, two wins in nine, nine um, only against these dog shit opponents. Uh, Newcastle have hit form, uh, fighting for their lives. Um, they, I, I think they have... Um, I think they're safe from relegation now. Uh, they have a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, six, seven, eight, nine, nine points lead over um, Fulham, who are 18th. Uh, all teams um, in the relegation battle have played the same amount of games now. Um, obviously, Sheffield United already relegated. Uh, West Brom for me are gone, and uh, Fulham are now for me also gone. Only five games left. Mm in the season but west uh not west ham sorry uh newcastle will be looking to uh climb the table um obviously they are level on points with burnley and southampton but um southampton do have a game in hand on uh newcastle um newcastle's form coming into this like i said um has been pretty good um steve bruce 
since the January uh, window, since Willett's gone up there and he got a few men in, um, they've been doing pretty well. Obviously, St. Maximum coming back from injury, Joe Linton finding his form, Thank Almiron, uh, they've been doing their thing. Thank the Lord that Joe, Joe can't, can't play, play yeah. because he's been out in absolute smoke uh, for the the Geordies. But uh, Newcastle, um, they've only lost one in their last... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. They only lost one in their last seven, bro. That was a 3-0 defeat away to Brighton. Um, at home, they've been doing really well. 1-1 um, one, one draw. Last game out away at New um, Liverpool as well. That's a big result for them. Obviously, their last home game, 3-2 win against West Ham. You get me? Um how you feeling, man? Not too great. Uh, I don't know who I even want to see on this field. I know I know there's players that I don't want to see. I don't want to see fucking Danny Ceballos anywhere near this game. I don't want to see Rob Holding. I don't think he deserves to play after the shocking performance that he has. But I, I, this, these Premier League ones now, I mean, the juice is gone now. So I give you, we just show up type of deal. I mean, we're 10th. 46 points. Uh, Villa behind us. Uh, one point behind us with a game in hand. So, I mean, we could drop to 11th. Um, we could we could climb to 9th <laughs> if we win. <laughs> could climb to 9th. That is a possibility. But are we going to win, blood? That is the question, fam. You understand? Obviously, um, Tierney um, is good. Thank the Lord. Um, David Luiz is back. back. Abba. Like Odegaard, Laka, you get me? Um, how would you go? Uh, Obviously, the big game on Thursday. Thursday would, you give, would you give some man a run out to get some minutes under their belt for Thursday? Yes. So so there's certain guys that, that I'm looking to get minutes uh, out of those guys that have come back to at least provide pressure on these men that, that have not been playing well. Mm. So I would go in goal. I would go... You see now... Leno played well this last game. Fuck. I'll go burn Leno, I guess. Left back, I'll go Kieran Tierney. Let's get him match fit so that he can compete at that spot. Uh, center backs, I'll go Gabriel and David Luiz. I would have put in Pablo Mari instead of Gabriel, but we also want to see how Gabriel is doing and also them two. Uh, right back... I would go Cedric. Central midfield, I'd go Pate and Xhaka. <sighs> Number 10, I would go Martin Odegaard. Wide right, I would go... i will go Pepe on the right. i will go Martinelli on the left and Aubameyang up front. Leno in goal. Cedric, Louise, Gabriel, Tierney, Pate, Xhaka, Pepe, Smithrow, Martinelli, Abba. So basically, same as yours. Is yeah, I'm putting in Smithrow Smith instead, instead of Odegaard. Odegaard. Yeah. I'm going with the mill. You get me. Um, prediction. We should be able to win two one. <laughs> I said he should be able to win. We should. No, we should. No, we genuinely should. We should. We, we should be able to win. <laughs> aye, aye. Um, one, one. One, one, bro. One, one. The big game this weekend goes down at OT, blood. Uh, Man United taking on Liverpool. Uh, Man United in second position, 10 points behind Man City. Excuse me. Um, Liverpool, they are four points off the top four. Obviously coming off the back of um, a 1-1 draw at home against uh, Newcastle. Uh, stoppage time equaliser from the boy Joe Willock. Joe Willock. Uh, Man United... Coming into this one with some big, big confidence. Obviously, 6-2 victory. Um, last game in the league uh, was a dull... Not even really dull. It was a nil-nil. Mm -hmm. You get me? With Leeds. 
But um, Ole versus Klopp. What's gonna happen here, blood? Because Liverpool, yeah, they've been kind of, they've been kind of shit, blood. Yeah. You understand? Um, Man United are on a decent run and of form. It's, it's a great run of form. It's you understand? Great. That's what I'm saying. Liverpool coming in, coming into this on the back of two draws. You get me? Obviously, Man United um, before the draw against um, Leeds, they had won five in a row. Last time they've lost in the league is on the 27th, the 27th of January. United, yeah, to Sheffield. Yeah, they've one. been on form, blood. They've the only game they lost was the cup, the Leicester game. Crazy. That's the only one they lost. Ay, ay, ay. But this is a big one, man. You get me the the match of the weekend, mm-hmm. derby. You get me a lot of <laughs> a lot of hatred from both sides. Who do you think's got this one though? I think this is gonna be a draw. So do I. I think it's gonna be a two two draw. Two, two. I think it's going to be an open game. I think it's going to be pretty. It's going to be a pretty good game. Two two draw. I think one. one I, think, I think. I think this is another one, one on one. You know, dull or yeah, a dull one. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dull man. Um, let's go through the other fixtures for the people. Them, it's going to fly through them quickly. Just get Zars predictions. Um, Southampton Leicester. Leicester should be able to do it. Kelechi's on smoke. Kid cannot stop scoring. Facts. Yep. So Leicester should do it. Uh, Palace against City. Yeah. Next. <laughs> how many? Said how, next. How many? <laughs> man just said next in her blood. It's, it's mad like that. How many? It's true. <laughs> uh, Brighton Leeds. It should be a. This should be a good. Should one be a too. decent game. Yeah, this one should be decent. Uh, I'm gonna go for a draw in this one. I think I will. I'll go Leeds. I'm gonna go one-one draw. I'll go this. Leeds. Chelsea Fulham West London Derby. Chelsea one 0 Yeah, I got Chelsea. Sneak by. Everton Villa. Damn, this should no, be a good game. Good one. This should be a good game. I'll go Everton. Yeah, Goodison Park. You have to go Everton. You have to go Everton. Tottenham Sheffield United. Let's go Sheffield. Yeah, hopefully, but you fucking yeah, know them, man. Yeah. They'll probably get it. <laughs> um, Midlands Derby. West Brom taking on Wolves. Wolves should be able to sneak this one. I'm going to go even West Brom. Away. Oh, home, home win for West Brom? Yeah, yeah, come on, Callum. Come on, Easy. <laughs> you get me? And then finally, um, Burnley entertain West Ham. Yeah, West Ham does this. Yeah? Yep. So there you go, people. That's another one wrapped up for your class, blood. You understand? Shout out Heineken. You feel me? Thank you to Kobe, too. Big up Kobe as well. You understand? We appreciate you, bro. You get me? We're definitely going to take you up on your offer. And come down to LA and link up and start scurring in the convertible. You know what I'm saying? But you get me big up Heineken. Make sure um, you go and get your six pack or 12 pack from your local retailer. Um, make sure you're 21 and please drink responsibly. Big up my brother Jets who's interview, um, interviewing, who's chopping up the Kobe um, interview so we can get this podcast out ASAP. Big up my brother Josh, uh, Josh sorry, uh, for um, jumping in. My brother Zar, as usual, every week. Sure. Come big, on, G. Big up yourself, troops. And before we end it, um, obviously, we will be um, taking part in um, the social media blackout uh, to stop uh, online abuse and stop online racism. So from three o'clock um, US time, we will not be posting um, on our Instagrams or Twitters. That's me, Zar, and the Back Again account. Um, we will be putting out um, YouTube content, obviously, Sunday stream and all that but until then you get me we won't see you on the socials you lot stay safe and wash them fucking hands blood